Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comps. It has been said that after Armageddon, cockroaches and bird 43 watt meters will survive. And although this isn't a purist bird 43, it is in the family. On the bench, we have a bird 4304 directional watt meter. This meter differs from the 43 in that it does not use slugs, rather uses a switchable circuit to provide a measured power range of 15 to 500 watts over a frequency range of 25 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. Now this is much like my Telewave 44A meter as shown here. Now it's easy to see that our meter is a bit worse for wear and the directional switch is completely inoperable. So we're gonna take it apart and see if we can address that. This meter features in female connectors, which we can change to another species if desired, just like all the other bird family of meters. And this meter also features a BNC RF sample port, which I believe is 30 dB down from the input power applied to the meter, if I remember correctly. Now let's go ahead and open up this meter and see what the heck is going on inside. To gain access to the interior of the meter, we're going to remove these Phillips screws from around the perimeter of the meter. Once we've removed our screws, the back cover can be removed and we have access to the inside of our meter at this point here. You can see our line section here, our meter body with the different resistors, and you can see the switches in the front that we're going to have to work with. This switch here is the one in question, and you can see it moving around in there. So let's go ahead and remove our line section, and we'll do that with a couple of small Phillips screws down here. Once we've removed our two Phillips screws at the bottom, we can go ahead and take our line section and get it out of our way here. And we can see our switch in question. So let's go ahead and remove the knobs from the front and see if we can get this switch out of here. So now we've turned our meter over and we'll go ahead and remove our knob by backing the set screw out. And we've got a nut here. Well, let's study our switch here. The switch in question is nothing more than a double pull, single throw rotary switch, and it has a very positive action. There's a lot of resistance to movement. As a matter of fact, you have to tighten a knob on here to be able to exert enough force on this because of the positive action of the switch here with this rather large spring. So you can see the flats that are cast into the body of this switch. Well, Originally, I would believe the meter itself would also have this hole punched out with those flats in it. And as you can see over time, that all that stuff is wallowed out and there's a lot of play in there. So whoever owned this particular meter in the past had stacked a nut on the switch and then attempted to use a inside tooth star lock and then tighten up this enough to allow the Starlock to bite on the body of the meter itself to inhibit rotation. And what they found is, is that it may work for a short period of time, but this positive action of the switch is working against it and you cannot take and apply enough torque to this threaded section of the switch body to hold this switch in place and prevent its rotation. And over time, this is why you have this situation right here. So we're not going to be able to replace this switch with one like this. We're going to end up having to go with something else. So I'm going to use a small toggle switch and we'll go into how I'm going to do it because this is a like a 3 8 inch hole, a little bit oversized from that. And this right here is a quarter inch hole for this switch. And this is just a Cole Hersey micro toggle that I've scavenged from something else. And this way I'm not going to have to spend any money to repair this particular meter. So the way this switch is wired is you have the forward sensor and the reflected power sensor attached here. And then you have two connections that run to our resistor board at the back of the meter movement itself. So in order to make this work, all we're going to do is, is remove all these old wires here. And then we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and place our forward on this side and are reflected on this side here and then just manipulating this switch is going to allow us to make this function just fine. 
So I soldered in our toggle switch and you can see this is our reflected power sensor, our forward power sensor. And you can see that these two wires here run to our ribbon cable that go to our resistor board at the back of our meter movement. So let's go ahead and build some kind of a bushing so we can install this in the same recess. Again, if I desire to do so, I could just knock a quarter inch hole in here and then tighten this up on the back side of that, but I'd rather not open another hole inside this meter body if I didn't have to. So the way I've elected to place a bushing on this switch is just using a simple O-ring out of my assortment here. This O-ring, O-ring 3 or R3, is a quarter inch inside diameter and 3 eighths outside diameter which fits in our hole perfectly well and then I'm just going to go ahead and place this through the body of the meter and then I'm going to use this washer on the opposite side and a nut and what this is going to do is, is this is going to allow me to tighten up the switch and it's not going to have so much play in it because that bushing is going to take up some of that space so let's see how this is going to work out for us. That's in our forward position there, and that'll be our reflected. We'll line that switch up, get our thread started. So let's get a wrench and tighten this up. You can see we have our switch installed and tightened up. Let's go ahead and reinstall our line section and put our meter together, and we'll perform some tests to make sure everything is going to be A-OK. -okay. Well, let's go ahead and perform our first test. We're going to use a portable radio. We've got it set for 15 watts. We're going to go ahead and place a dummy load under our output. I have an N to B and C on this end for my jumper to my portable radio. Portable radio is tuned for 3 watts of forward power. And that's about where we're at there. Going to go to reflected power. Let's see where we're at. No indication, which is good. Let's remove our dummy load here and induce a significant mismatch. We should see a significant amount of power reflected on our meter. And we do. So good news. Well, let's go ahead and check the accuracy of our meter at a higher power level. We're going to do it with VHF. And we're going to use my Onritsu Cellmaster as our standard. So I'm going to go ahead and transmit now. And you can see we're around 40 watts of power. Let's test out our meter on higher power. The uh, power output of this radio is 40 watts. And we're going to transmit now. And it looks like 40. Now let's check our reflected. So we'll go to reflected and then we're going to decrease the range. And you can see we're a little less than a watt of reflected power. Well, it's certainly not the most elegant repair, but considering that this meter before this was e-waste and it cost me nothing at all to repair it, and you saw just how little time's invested in this project, and now we have a functioning piece of equipment, I'll take it. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.